Well, percenters, welcome back to 1424 Basketball Training, where the goal is to take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or 1% of your day to get better. For those that are new, welcome. I'm Coach Tommy. I'm a former psychologist, now a performance enhancement specialist and basketball coach. On this channel, I simplify life and basketball into three buckets, mind, body, and craft. In today's teaching tape, we've got the Jazz versus the Grizzlies. So let's see what we can do to improve our minds today. Uh, game three? Game three, um, what are we focused on? We usually focus on substance over style. Um, Bogdanovich, Donovan Mitchell coming back strong. Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert. You guys know I like John Moran a lot. Dylan Brooks is a bucket. Kyle Anderson, one of my favorites because he breaks the, the mold on you got to be faster or jump higher or he breaks everything. Sh shoots super slow. Um, breaks all the traditional stuff so when i talk about principle over precedent right so everybody's teaching about precedent and forget what the principles of basketball are i'm teaching the principles here man get the ball in the bucket oh my god herky jerky the three changes you need in basketball change of level change of speed change of direction change of mind just like that going in right? Looking to drive and then Euro steps and then turns it into a pass. I like this court. I like this court a lot, Memphis Grizzlies. This has been a fun matchup so far, even though it's a 1-8. I mean, a lot of these teams are very, very similar, very, very close. I asked, I think, last last video, who's the best player on the court? Is it Spider Mitchell or John Morant? I think uh, overwhelmingly it's it's Spider Mitchell, but John Morant is definitely, definitely on the rise. All summer long, John Morant floaters and three-point shots. It's all you need to work on. 10,000 shots a day bogey and then the other question i asked um who's better this bogdanovich or the one on the hawks bogdanovich and i think right now i'm choosing this one a little bit bigger a little bit stronger a little bit more assertive a little bit more aggressive the other one a much better ball handler i think much better uh off the dribble shooter joe ingles catch and shoot three have the Jazz made any – oh, my God. Have the Jazz made any adjustments or have the Grizzlies made any adjustments after losing their last game? Uh, it's going to be very hard to stay in front of Donovan Mitchell. Woo! Woo! Okay, so here's some individual moves that you guys can work on. Remember, dribbling is like a lot like fighting. You don't really need it until you get into a fight, but when you do get in a fight uh, – the ability to fight is really, really helpful. Most of the times I'm telling you guys to focus on passing because passing is the number one skill needed in basketball. That's right. I said passing. Um, and if you guys are shaking your head, like saying dribbling or shooting, well, to me, shooting is passing to the rim. So passing, okay. Pass with your left, pass with your right, hook pass, underhand pass, behind the back pass. It all comes from your arms, the ability to control your arms. So you need all that. So here we go. One-on-one -on -one fighting. Semi-transition. This is an anchored push, right? Boom. Hesitate. Anchor this foot between the legs as you, as you step forward. Get around. So if you're a fast player, if you're a fast player, if you have the ability to do this, if people are concerned about you blowing by them all the time, this has got to be one of your best moves. So anchored. Boom. Plant that thing. And then between the legs without slowing down too much. CJ McCollum did it really, really good. Just did the video on um, Blazers. Lonzo Ball does that really well going, going uh, left to right. I think Kemba Walker does it pretty well. Kyrie Irving does it pretty well. Uh-oh, Memphis. 
Oh, Rudy Gobert knows that slice layup is coming. So John Morant's done this plenty of times now. Rudy Gobert's seen it enough, right? So normally he angles his body, right? Looks like he's about to pass it, right? But then he's doing that slice layup coming through here, extend with the left hand. Uh, John Morant does this a lot. And Rudy Gobert's seen enough. He's, he's smart. He's definitely seen the tape. Someone sent him the teaching tape. And uh, Rudy Gobert, one of the best defenders, is on it. Um, one of the most undervalued centers, Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, um, JaVale McGee. A lot of these bigs, I get no love. Um, super, super valuable. Anchor of defense. Erase a lot of shots, change a lot of shots, intimidate a lot of shots, set screens. He ain't really love them. That's a flop. They do a little post up and pass out. It's like this, man. <laughs> Big screen, boom, push cross by the guard, big rolling, right? Just rolling with the speed of the, with the playmaker. Don't overrun it. Don't run it too fast. Don't run it too slow. You got to keep this spacing. You got to keep this two-on-one. You have to keep this two-on-one. So if you run too far, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit easy to guard both. You got to keep him guessing. Should I guard the ball? Should I guard my, my man? Should I guard the roller? Should I guard the shot? Should I guard the lob? Whatever the defense chooses, they're wrong. If you're if you're a good offensive player, I mean a great offensive player, right? Great offensive players will just exploit everything. It's kind of like that. Slipping through there, right foot, right hand finish. Beyond balance, man. He's got to come off right here. Boom, look at all the space they give him, right? Left, right, plant that thing, shoot it. Um, a little. A little hesitation there to, re to regain balance. Think about it. 10,000 shots a day or something, John Morant. But uh, you need to get on that gun. You need to get – oh, my God, throwing 360s in the playoffs. All right. All right. I wish you would have gone 360 underneath the leg. Savage. <laughs> Give the home fans what they want to see, even though you're down. I love it, though. Oh, pass fake. I'm a shooter. I get paid to shoot. I ain't passing to you. Dylan Brooks, tough buckets, tough buckets. Tough bucket, Brooks. <clears throat> Why offense always wins is because uh, at some point, you know, in the, what, 2000s or something, this dribble, that's illegal as shit. That is illegal as shit. This thing, this this used to be called a carry, but now uh, I teach it. It's called a push cross. It's illegal as shit. It gives the offense a gigantic goddamn advantage. Um, every player does it now, and the refs don't call it, so now it's legal. So the offense is always pushing the boundaries, and this is why thieves will always be ahead of cops, man. Right? Cops are the referees. Cops are the defense. You're just trying to you know enforce some stuff. Offense will always win, man. Defense is, is really uh, not for basketball. <laughs> get with the program, man. You can hate it or you can get on this train. Your ability to adapt quick, that's what it's all about, man. Get with it or get left behind. That's three seconds on JV, but they're, they're worrying about uh, Dylan Brooks here. Let's count it. Let's be a referee. One, two, three, four, right? Almost five seconds on JV, but uh, they're, they're all staring at Dylan Brooks with the beautiful pivot footwork. The NBA wants you to score high school basketball. They want you to actually don't know, but the NBA definitely wants you to score more. So no more hand checking. They want you jacking up threes. They want it up and down. Oh, slow-mo, get it, Euro, slow-mo, step, sweep, play. Boom, 
Mike Conley with the off the ball footwork coming off. Boom. Quick little right left. Uh oh, he's not looking happy. Don't even know what the, the Grizzlies coach's name is. Jaron Jackson, what are you doing? Doing all that. Jonas Valanciunas reverse pivot into a mid range pull up. Conley having a big game so far, looks like. Tough move, Jaron Jackson. He, he's pretty light on his feet between the leg. Spin move off of the glass. Kyle Anderson, slow mo, half spin, dime. Get that shit, you know, take this elbow to your face or slap you in the face, Rudy Gobert. This stuff is uh, the stuff that you guys aren't taught or some of you guys aren't taught. I mean, right? He, with both hands on the ball, he shoves Gobert. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's pretty legal if you do it with the ball in your hand. So if you try to elbow someone, make sure both hands are on the ball. If you're trying to shove somebody, make both make sure both hands are on the ball. If you're trying to run somebody over like a running back, trying to tuck it, get through that double team, make sure both hands are on the ball. Oh my God, what an adjustment. That's that boy different. Spin, almost lose the dribble, get up in the air, adjust, bank it off the glass, avoid the contact, handle the contact. Jaron Jackson with the left-handed floater. Big man's doing big man like things because these are these are normal things for big man now. Spider Mitchell, put him on your hip, put him in jail, weave around. This is uh, this is training 101, pick and roll training 101, get him behind. Off arm, find out where your man is, put him on your hip, secure your man, figure out what this big man is going to do. Is he zoning you? What is he going to do? Wait for the roller, get around your roller, use it as a second pick and roll, sweep around. Y'all that are trying to be, you know, fancy pick and roll players. If you're that one ball handler on the team, right? Here you go, pick and roll, come off aggressive. Put your man on your hip, get in front, put him in jail, put him on your hip, make sure you feel him, make sure you know where he's at, how's the big guard are you? Okay, can you get around? Do you need the floater? Okay, use that big, wait for that big to roll. Use him as a screen, go around. Not everybody can be that playmaker. Not everybody can make all those decisions at every single level. Not everybody has the uh, ball handling chops, the poise. Much, much simpler reads here where, where uh, it takes less decisions and less skills. Just come off aggressively. Attack the gap, in and out, and shoot. So control the defense. Just be aggressive, right? Boom. Okay, a lot, lot easier to uh, just control the offense. So if you're getting in a fight, right, and the guy puts his hand up, and you're about to get in a fight, the dude puts his hand up, and then you put your hand up, right? You don't want to wait for that. You just want to punch him in the face before he puts his hand up. So <laughs> the uh, previous play with, with Donovan Mitchell, right? Doing this. This is him just getting in front, reading, reacting, 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 reading, reacting, reacting, reacting. Okay. So that requires a lot more skill, more patience this time around, just come across, boom, hit him with one big in and out, All right? He's reeling into a jumper. So this is offense controlling defense. Come off aggressive, boom. There's two ways to play it, man. Depends on, depends on who you are, what skill you got. So if you got the brains, if you got the processing power, if you got the uh, the reads, the ball handling, the playmaking, the brains, the patience, all that, by all means, read and react. <clears throat> but if you got the speed, you got the athleticism, you should be uh, dictating everything. I dictate terms. Jordan Clarkson. Actually, now, now I'm a, I'm a little rant. So, so coaches or trainers, they just have one style of coaching and uh, they try to fit everybody into that particular system. And it, and it I mean, uh, in the NBA, I guess it can work because you can, you can get GMs to find you like a different team and you can get different teams and stuff like that. But as a coach, it's also mind body craft for, for coaches. Like 
If you get one team and they're slow, uh, you better slow it down. If you get one team that's fast and small, you better speed it up. If you got a team that can't shoot, you better learn how to do some driving kicks and, and shoot some threes or pretend to shoot threes. If you only have one style um, and your team changes, you know, it's going to suck for you. So players, um, when I'm coaching or even different teams during different seasons, the player personnel, like this year, um, injuries happen. And then, so if your injuries happen, you have a, basically a whole new team. It's like getting, getting your team wiped out because your best player is gone. And then you have to switch up a whole mentality of the team and you have to create a whole new culture. You got to find new leaders and everything. You got to be able to switch up right away or, or you're just going to beat the old thing to death and you don't have the personnel you're going to lose. So as, as a trainer, it's like, you know, parents want me to train their kids and players, you know, they want to be everything, right? You got to be self-aware of what you are, what type of person you're going to be, how much work you're willing to put in. And um, do you want the quick answers or do you want the real answers? And usually the quick answers aren't the real answers. Memphis coming back. So a lot of trainers will just, you know, you'll, you'll see a, all the players that they train, they, they play the exact same way. And, and you're starting to see in the NBA, like every player plays the same way now. Um, that's because they're all going to the same trainers and that trainer or coach or, or whatever has a particular style that the way they coach. And then uh, you see everybody going towards that style. Get that weak shit out of here. Rudy Gobert. Oh. Eraser. Kyle Anderson. There's a whole lot of dribbling. A whole lot of dribbling. This is a scorer's mentality when I talk about roles versus positions, right? Scorer mentality. I'm going to do it. I don't care what you think. Give me the ball. Get the hell out. The, get out my way. Right? You have snipers that just stand in the corner. They're usually the most prepared. You have defenders that usually don't care about the spotlight. They just set screens. They do all the dirty work. And then you have, uh, there's no playmakers on the court. Mike Conley's a playmaker. Spider Mitchell's more of a scorer. <laughs> playmakers are the uh, strategists. That's Nikola Jokic, Luka, um, LeBron, right? Scores is, is this. This is Jordan Clarkson. In and out between the legs. Great defense. Still with you. Boom, got a spin move up. Oh, still with you, right? Oh, shit, you're still in my way. I look like I'm out of control. I don't care. I'm putting my head down. I'm getting around you. Anyways, you know, at the very last second, I find a little angle at the rim, throw it up. Ugly. 100% ugly. But it's a bucket. It is a bucket. All right. It doesn't matter how it looks, man. Sometimes it looks out of control. If he misses it, the coach is going to, you know, lose his mind. Give and take. You got you to live with the good stuff. Live with the bad stuff. Do I wish Kyle Anderson was faster? Hell yeah. But, uh, you know, he's slow. You got you to gotta love him. You got to love him for all his slowness and all his, uh, all his non-fastness. Grace and Allen, oh, my God, the Grizzlies are going to win. Bump out. There you go. There you go. Spider Mitchell's a little bit short. Um, so normally this bump out here. All right, so when you get when you get the guy in your hip right here, you have all this space. You have all this space to run out to. So DeMar DeRozan, Kobe Bryant, Devin Booker, these guys, CJ McCollum, they're, they're comfortable with a bump out and going right into a jumper. Jason Tatum will do it, I'm sure, sometimes. Spider Mitchell, not particularly. He likes to get around the rim, do a little bit more floaters, right? So he bumps out, right? Has these, doesn't have it, jabs, spins, gets back to his floater. That's John Moran's go-to move. This is the toughest move in, in, you know, to stop coming back, right? I called it in the last video, right? Driving hard, right? Throw it, boom, right, left. He's so quick, he gets up before that other person can even get up. Rudy Gobert, super tall, super quick. And uh, he's up and it's out of his hands. <coughs> Rudy Gobert is quick off his feet, but even in his length, quickness, and size, it's, it's too slow. Like John Morant is just different <laughs> just different if he makes out with any consistency 
He's going to be a tough, 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 tough bike here. Dylan Brooks, tough, bro tough bucket Brooks, right? Same kind of thing, right? John Morant would have hit and then jumped quickly and released it. But Dylan Brooks is not that type of athlete, not that type of player. It's a right, left, controlled fade, leaning slightly back. Right? So, and then also high arc. Rudy Gobert is also still there. So changing the trajectory, understanding who you are, what type of a player you are. Do you have the athleticism to, to stagger and control fade? Bogey. Ooh, about time. It's been a long time since I've seen a 2.5 drill from the Utah Jazz, but normally they're, they're the, uh, the best one at doing it. Normally this is an X out. Normally you would have them here, right? Okay, him move up, set the screen, get in here, kick it. All right, there goes the roll. Kick it. Don't have anything. Two dribbles or less, 0.5 seconds or less to make your mind up. All right, attack the gap. You get the help coming. All right, backside guy moving without the ball, shifting to the open space. <laughs> Dylan Brooks thinks Conley's over here, right? And then he has to come here. So he adjusts. Mike Conley attacks right away. So now Brooks is trailing. Now somebody's got to come help, right? JV is like, shit, am I going to get dunked on a floater? What should I do? I'm guarding nothing. I'm still stuck on my feet. Gets banged on. Great job by the Jazz. I mean, this, this, is, this is what basketball should look like, more or less. I mean, share the ball, use the ball, use your teammates. Pretty stuff. That's, you know, one of the major reasons why Jazz are first place. I thought he was going to dunk on him. I thought he was going to dunk on him right here. Spider Mitchell. What happened? Thought he fell hard. There it is again. Woo! Can he hit that? Oh, that's big. You need the dude. You need the dude. Okay, so 95% of the time I say it's, you know, team game, off ball movement, all ball movement. Last four minutes of the game. Last four minutes of the game or so, when you need that tough bucket in a close game, you need that dude. The dude, is he the dude, right? Is he the dude? Um, is he the dude? So down the end, you need that big bucket getter, the tough bucket boy. Donovan Mitchell. Oh, tough finish around the rim. Oh, oh, no, no. Right, so John Morant, I mean, this is your time. This is really your time. This is your time, man. You shouldn't be giving this up to him. 95% of the time, this is the right play. Sometimes you got to press this shit and see what happens and force the action a little bit. Rudy Gobert. Same kind of thing here. I mean, this, this is the game's pretty much over here, right? Get it to the gap. Rudy Gobert, if this was Draymond Green, defender, playmaker, Rudy Gobert is a defender <coughs> and then slasher, right? Draymond Green would have uh, – actually, Draymond Green would have kicked that thing right away already. Uh, slightly better player would have took one dribble and then drew this guy a little bit more and then swung it. But as a slasher, Rudy Gobert is trying to bang that thing home. Gets knocked out of his hands. No big deal. Game's pretty much already wrapped. Interesting series. I mean, uh, John Morant kind of came out, showed the Jazz that he's a force to be reckoned with. Donovan Mitchell coming back, showing him, showing everybody that he's the best player on the court. 28-29, Rudy Gobert. Uh, let's go to – let's go here. Games going back to uh, how do I get back to the thing, man? I have no idea what I'm doing. Obviously, you guys can see I don't. Uh, Check the stats very often. Oh, here we go. The games from yesterday. Sorry about that. 
Let's check out the box score real quick. Miami Heat and Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee, I think, swept them. Who cares? I mean, the Heat, they overachieved last year. They had no chance. Um, Bogdanovich, two out of three, 50%. Royce O'Neal, four out of seven. Great job. Rudy Gobert, seven of eight. Nobody's stopping him. Donovan Mitchell, not a great shooting percentage, but the aggression is there. Feel, oh, my God. So all that stuff, time he was missing, and then he hit a big, real big three down the end, nine out of 11. He's getting to the rack. Mike Conley, great shooting. Holy smoke, seven out of 10. Mike Conley, good Lord. Good Lord, Mike Conley. He used to be a non-shooter, and they used to say he couldn't shoot. That's what happens when you put in a ton of work. Super underrated. I don't think he's ever been an all-star. Kyle Anderson, man, I give you a lot of love, bro. What's up? Nothing good for you, John Morant, 10 out of 23, 2 out of 7. Yeah, I mean, keep taking them, bro. Keep taking them. You're probably going to lose this series, but you got to take them. You got to take them in, like I said, 10,000 shots a day or more, or something crazy like that, at least 1,000. At least 1,000 shots a day. Very possible. Dylan Brooks, 11 out of 24. He's taking a lot of shots, one out of seven. These guys ain't making threes. If you ain't making threes, uh, you don't stand a chance. All right. Um, what did you guys learn from this video? I mean, uh, John Morant, you got to get on the, the gun. Just just start jacking up threes, and, and you need to get it with a mental coach and, and somebody like uh, me to just say, keep shooting it. Be confident. Be confident. Build it up. Well, don't worry. If they back up, shoot it. Keep shooting it. Keep shooting it. And uh, they'll fall. They'll fall. Keep going in. Keep attacking the rim. and uh, just impact the game uh jazz though i think they're just <laughs> a way better team so uh getting getting their chops up ready for either the uh whoever whoever's next for them all right guys let me know what you guys learned until next time take 14 minutes 24 seconds or one percent of your day to get better peace